Jade Kunkel was Scotland's first professional women's rugby player. And this loose forward sometimes racks up as many carries as entire teams put together. But she doesn't only put in heroic performances on the rugby pitch. She also works for the London Fire Brigade. She's taken some time out of her international career in order to qualify. That's how passionate she is about this job and people's safety. Jay, thank you for welcoming us to your other place of work. And if you're watching this wondering why is there a droning noise coming through every now and again, it's because the Feltham Fire Station is pretty much across the road from Heathrow Airport. Yes, yes. Tell me about what happens here and how much time of the week you spend here on average. So I'm a full-time firefighter here, based here, and our shift's pattern is two days, two nights, then four off. So you'll have your block of four, and then you'll have your four days off as well. So your day shifts and then your night shifts, and then it kind of, you got a nice couple of days off to recover or play rugby in my instance. I was going to say, but that doesn't allow for a lot of routine or rhythm or normal sleep pattern. As an athlete, that must be so hard. Um, well, I'm somebody who really likes colour-coded calendar and schedule, so I make sure, you know, as much as I can, I'll, you know, factor in where I'm going to sleep, when I'm going to train, kind of what I'm going to do, when I'm in work, etc. So I've kind of got it all planned out in advance so I can make sure I do everything I need to do. But you do do two very demanding jobs, so I guess that's probably the only way of doing it. Yeah, definitely. You've, get, you've definitely got to be organised, but you know when you're passionate about both things, you want to make them both work. So I'm going to do everything I can to make them both work. And don't get me wrong, sometimes it is challenging, especially when it's been busy in both areas. But, you know, because I enjoy doing both, it makes it a little bit easier. Why rugby? So I grew up watching my dad play a lot and my brothers used to always go and play as well. Um, and it was always, I guess, a bit envious that they had a team to play in and I didn't. So a couple of times a year, I would join, you know, any form of rugby team that I could. So somebody might have been looking for an extra player when, in the under 15s and I would try and, you know, get myself involved in that or a random under 18 kind of festival and I would just join a random team. So it was very sporadic. But mostly I played basketball, but I always knew my heart kind of was toward rugby. So when I was 17, I was like, nope, I'm fed up of watching everyone else play. So I was like, I want to play as well. So then traveled to Edinburgh to develop a uh, trial for a development day. And then it just kind of took off from there. And I've never looked back. In rugby, a lot of people would say the payoff is winning. What is it on a day here that feels like this is why I'm doing it? When we turn out to emergency incidents, that's probably one of the worst days of that person's life. So if you can do anything you can to just make that easier for them, like from an operational perspective, yes, but also just from a human perspective, if you know, after everything's sorted at the incident, to actually just have that conversation with them, to try and reassure them. And I think reassurance is huge and just being like able to speak to people. And I think if you can know that you've made that terrible situation that they've gone through that little bit easier to deal with, I think that's a big win for me. Can you tell us about one? Um, yeah, so I went to an incident um, and unfortunately um, a man had his legs run over by a lorry. So obviously it was quite a graphic incident. It was after a night shift, so it was quite like, you know, everyone was tired. Um, and it was probably the first incident that I'd really seen a person in a lot of pain. Um, and we were one of the first appliances there. So, you know, we had to perform quite a lot of first aid on that. But then we got to work with the HEMS team, so the helicopter doctors, um, and then obviously do everything we can um, to make him the most comfortable we could and also get him then ready to get sent to hospital. And then when we got back, everyone, you know, made sure everyone was okay, checked in, like, yeah, it was another difficult shout, but, you know, everyone checks in, you don't just leave and that's another day, like, everyone makes sure you're okay because you don't know how other people are going to react. And I think, you know, that's, that's quite special that everyone is, you know, out there and there's no tabooness around, oh no, you must be fine. Like, they will check in, just make sure you're okay as well, which is good. When people look at the way you play, you are absolutely fearless. I mean, it is something to behold, the intensity with which you just keep going. The engine is clearly like fired up. 
how does that feel? Do you ever feel nervous or do you feel free on the pitch? Because it looks like you're free. I'm awful with nerves. Really? Um, Pre-match, I'm awful. In the build-up to a game, I'm awful. Um, you know, I've got to make sure that I write things on my wrist. But after the warm-up, I have to untie my boots and tie them back up to feel ready. And, you know, like I do, I get proper nervous in the build-up to game day. Normally, when that final whistle goes, everything just kind of relaxes but especially you know when when there is high pressure moments on the pitch i do i do feel nervous but you know being a senior head you've very much got to try and keep a calm head and everything you say needs to be calm collected and to the point so i think i'm very good at being able to switch but i know deep down inside i'm still very nervous as well are you ever nervous when you get on this thing Every time the um, bells drop and there's an instant come through, you know, the adrenaline happens, your heart races. And, you know, when you find out what you're going to, it's exciting and it is nerve wracking as well um, because you don't know what you're turning up to necessarily. You can read a call slip, but it could be so different when you're there. Um, but I think that adds all the excitement as well. And, you know, we're well trained in every aspect that no matter what we go to, we're going to have, you know, some form of training around it. And like I said before, you're always with somebody else as well. So you're working as a team. So even if you're not 100% sure on that tiny little element, somebody else is bound to know, or you work together to find a solution uh, to work best. But yeah, nervous, but also weirdly super excited all the time. You missed out on a Six Nations tournament in order to qualify here. Yep. What do the guys that you work with, your colleagues here at the Fire Brigade, have to say about your rugby career? You know, they're always super supportive. Like I get the odd picture on the WhatsApp um, where they, you know, I've got a game up on the TV. Obviously our games are on BBC Alba at the moment, so they can't understand half the commentary. Um, but no, it's nice. It's really supportive. And, you know, even with the club and the international stuff, when I come back in, you know, they've asked how training was or that they've watched the match. And if they haven't watched the match, how the match went and stuff like that. So really supportive, which is great. This is going to sound silly, but are you ever worried about injuries when you're doing this job that would impact on the rugby? I actually think it's the opposite way round. I'm more worried about the injuries I'd get in rugby, which would then impact this job. Um, I think this job, yeah, like you could end up with any injury and in, in rugby you could end up with any injury. But I think, you know, because I love both, I don't want to miss out on either. So the last thing I want is to get injured. And I did get injured, I ended up having to have surgery. So I was off for a bit. Um, but that which I find really hard because then you know you can't do what you want to do but again both sets were so supportive and worked together in order to get me back as quick as possible to be able to you know do everything I can safely which was great. When you see the kind of um, trauma that people experience in this job does rugby and the things that we obsess over in the sport sometimes feel a little ridiculous or small? Do you sometimes look at the things that people stress about and go, you don't live in the real world? Do you sometimes battle with that? Yeah, I mean, there are some occasions, but I guess you've got to see everything as relative. Like if that's something that's bothering them, then clearly it's bothering them for a reason. I guess, yeah, you can see the bigger picture in life and the, like the smaller things as well that you should probably focus on. but. If it affects somebody because that's what they're affected by, I think you just have to accept that and be there for that person, whatever it may be, even if you don't fully agree with it. Like somebody might say they've had a hard day because they've done X, Y, and Z, but you know, to me, that might not seem like a hard day, but if it's been a hard day for them, I guess you need to, you know, you need to appreciate that that's what's been hard for them. But yeah, it does open your eyes to the real world for sure.